I'm Phil Sipley. I've been a resident for 40 plus years in town. And I tell my story easily. I've drove past this building for 40 years, not quite, 30, 33 years. And I stopped in and said, after a year of doing nothing after retirement at 72, 73, I stopped in to see Amy and said, do you need help to serve coffee or something? And she offered me a, a spot on the uh, Council of Aging. And then she said, we have this project that's been milling around for a while. And we're going to talk about that project tonight. So that's me. Uh, Co-chair of the committee is Dave. I don't. Dave Kersey, police chief in town. Uh, lived in town 27 years. I've uh, been your police chief for eight. And uh, Phil and I have been working part of the past 18 months on this project. Okay. So try to take my experience from building the police station onto here and make sure we do it right. You got it. And Dave just went through this with the police station, what, three years ago? You moved in for four years? Uh, yeah, we moved in. We started the project in 2017. It was approved in 2018. We moved in in 2021 because of COVID. It took a little bit longer. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, tonight's interactive, but I want to give you a set of stage. We kind of just roughly go over some notes. Uh, you know, welcome. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the history. Uh, this building's been here for 33 years, this part of the building. 17 years ago, they put the back part of the building on. <clears throat> I think shortly after they put the back part of the building, actually before they put the back part, they started to do a study and analysis of what the needs are. Being in Menden for 40 years, I understand that we tend to build things for what we need today and not for the future. We run out of space in a lot of buildings we build, in my opinion. <clears throat> so here, uh, we did, back then, Amy and uh, her team and the COA began to look in earnest in probably 2014, what the needs and requirements of the bu building would be. And they started a couple studies. They went into architectural design back in 17 and 18. Uh, but at that time, there were other priorities in town. Dave's police station, schools. So it was never gotten past the select board or anyone else in town. So back in 2019 and 2020, during, after the pandemic, 20 and 21, we had another study commissioned. Actually, one of the original architects came down and said, we'll give you a downside version of this building, of the building we originally came up with in the first study. And we looked at that. And again, that one went soft. And we came up with and said, OK, it's time to get this going. We talked to the select board. We talked to the financial community. And we wound up getting <clears throat> the senior center raised higher on the priority list on this. Seniors make up 28% of the population, uh, just as a note. So with that, we went into a study back in 23, and now went to 24 with the design. We went through a needs analysis, and now we are presenting our findings and our costing to the town. Uh, any questions? Is it questions about history? I noticed there were some posts that we didn't spend enough time thinking about this. I think we've been thinking about it for close to 10 years. And studying and designing it for close to seven. So I think there's been plenty of thought put into it. Okay, let's continue on. <clears throat> about 14 months ago, thereabouts, oh, by the way, it all started with this. Making a difference to the lives of others was a slogan Amy picked up 10 years ago? Actually, I've, I've had that for 30 years. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, the, with the logo there, yeah. <laughs> 10. And essentially, that talks about all the activities that go in the center. If you haven't been here during the day, or I don't know people who have been active here, I think you'd be pleased to see the healthy lifestyle that the people are leave, leaving here and how it makes things better. But now, going into it, let's take a look at, to get to where we are here, we did a needs analysis of what the center is used for, capacity, people, parking, traffic flows, and we determined that this building would be inadequate to expand on because of land constraints. We first started with that, an expansion of this building. But there's still the parking issues. There's still the septic issues. There's still a non-standard well issue. And there's not, this footprint is very little, very small. So then we said, okay, what are the possibilities with the architect? He said, because this building, we'd have to tear off the back half of the building to make it level. 
I'd, I'd invite anyone to try to go up and down these steps and understand how easy that is for accessibility. <laughs> Peg's our tour guide. <clears throat> so when you think about tearing off this half of the building, shutting this building down, because you're going to gut it, relocate the facility for a year, the cost to do that was equal to build new construction. That came up to the committee somewhere three or four months into the process. So we said, what does the town own or what property do we have that's available to the for the center? So we took a look at this location and three others. Morrissey Boulevard Drive? Morrison Drive, where the fire station is. There's a shell of a building in the back there that we were once going to use. Yeah, it was targeted for a police station that didn't work. Yeah, it's town owned. Though. Town owned. We looked at a lot at Hopedale and North Ave, and that was going to be donated by a family uh, yes. there, but, but there was a lot of cons conservation restrictions on that land. The issue with that land is, and conservation restrictions, to undo that requires two town meetings and two state legislation sessions. So you're talking two to three years to get through that. And if you do that, each year that you wait, based on our current cost, it would go up at least a half a million to more dollars per year, based on just conservative numbers, 5% or 8%. By the way, between 20 and 21, 23, building costs went up 24%. Mm -hmm. So you wonder why the cost of the building is more. That's one of the reasons. So in this study, we came up with floor plans, needs, population, and we're building a building that's good for two roles. Not only the senior center, but a community center, a diverse center for all the population. Many people would like to use this or have asked, you've seen it on Facebook and other places, is there a place in town where I can have a party for my kids? Kind of a graduation party. Is there a place where I can meet with uh, with my group. This building can only generally handle small activity of just cards and activities here, but one function at a time, because it's here. When you have a training program or an exercise program and you're serving lunch, the staff here reconfigures this room once, twice, potentially three times a day, instead of servicing the needs of the population. So we took all that into account. We thought about recreation, and because where we're at on that lot, we, we mapped together with the Conservation Commission and their CPA funds that we're looking at to put some recreation facilities on this center, which will be two pickleball courts, a basketball court, and we're going to have some shuffleboard and bocce court. Public use. Public use. That's not just senior centers. We're going to leverage the town system that Dan has for reservations, what he uses today for the basketball court. And by the way, he didn't have enough room down there to put another basketball court. And since we were breaking ground here and excavating, we can reduce the cost of all those courts because we can put that in the plan of preparation of this land here for this building. Oh, by the way, the building is North Avenue Route 16. Sorry. <clears throat> so with that, we had an architect put our stuff together uh, for three locations. Here, North Avenue Hopedale, and North Avenue 16. Morsi Drive because of its location, the state of the building, and the cost, emergency access in and out with the fire station was ruled out early. There was not enough expansion room for parking or the building. It's a good building, it's just, it's a shallow building, but wouldn't serve our needs. So with those three things coming in pass, we said, okay, we need to do a traffic study to make sure we know where we're putting this. People say, you can't put this up at Clough. It's too busy, too much traffic. There's traffic on the ins and out of school, and we can schedule to that, but the rest of the day is not as bad. There's only 5,000, a little over 5,000 cars that pass there on an average weekday, North Ave. Oh, it's 3 o'clock. You're right. You live right there. <laughs> and we're going to go get our scheduling from this gentleman. <laughs> but interesting enough, here, there's over 11,000 cars that pass here. And I think Dave will talk to the point that the, this is probably not a very safe area. No. 
No, so the traffic study, um, it's up to date. Um, that was actually, believe it or not, the least amount of traffic with all the sites we looked at. Yeah. Um, there's over 11,000 cars here, mostly truck traffic. Um, and when you deal with truck traffic, it's a lot, it's, it's dangerous because they can't stop as fast as cars. So, and the speed limit here is 40 and there's really not much to do to change it. Um, it's state regulated that we really can't make it any slower unless we do a traffic study. And the traffic study has to go through the state. And if we do that traffic study, we can't be around. It has to be independent, so we can't influence. So we wouldn't be patrolling this when they did it. And what they do is they do the average mean of the speeds. So if we're not around and everybody now here is doing 55 miles an hour, they could potentially actually raise the speed limit here. So we wouldn't want to do a traffic study here. Um, but I mean, this site, the visibility's here, that there's not great parking, it's tough getting out of here. We can design uh, on North Ave by the lights, um, an entrance where all the traffic gets designed. Um, it's just strictly an entrance and then it brings you to the center. It's not, you know, pull in and where do I park because there's nowhere to park and, or, you know, try to peek out. There's plenty of line distance here and line distance here to see, um, which, which is great for safety. And again, the traffic is half as much. Um, and someone said it's probably mostly during school time during the week. Um, okay. that's, that's a lot of the traffic. Can I disturb you for just, just one? Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking at that along Milford Street there. Um, is that town owned or is that something else? This is conservation. Uh, yeah. Strip. Yep. I was going to say. In this corner isn't isn't town owned. Yeah, in this corner isn't town owned. Okay. This is owned by a corporation that's probably going to be putting something there. Yeah. Yeah, this story. Can I ask what they were doing up there? The uh, other people that own the other pieces of land. Oh, I, I wouldn't they know. Were you, drilling, uh, digging, and uh, doing something. You'd probably have to talk to the building department or conservation. Yeah. They're probably just working on their lot to determine what you know, probably well wells or, or no. test sites. So yeah, I have no clue what they're doing. That would all be through the building department. But I'm sure they're getting ready to develop the lot. At one time, it was going to be a Cumberland Farms. And uh, I went before the annual town meeting to get a right away just to squeeze in a little bit more. The town voted no, so the Cumberland Farms didn't go there. So as, as the chief said, they're probably putting something there, but we don't. Yeah, we're not sure exactly what it is. They had an outfit from New Hampshire doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had, uh, speaking of that lot, we had that, this area, this is a 22 acre parcel or more. There's a, tw uh, no, excuse me, this is probably 24, 25, 26. This will take up about two and a half acres, including this front part, which we're not using. There's still 22 acres that go down the hill that's town owned and can be developed for some other things, we can, whatever the select board decided to do. And they could access, the road system could go down to it very simply if we wanted to. But with that, with that location, one of the concerns was it was Taft Orchard. And with that being an orchard, they said, okay, what about contaminants? So immediately what we did when we did the soil engineering, the preliminary engineering design, we dug 10 holes, took sales, soil samples from each, sent it out to an independent lab, and it came back that it's perfectly fine. And whatever the arsenic or other concerns that were there has dissipated through the land under natural conditions. And this is a state test. And it came back fine from the engineering firm. Engineering firm is L uh, DNL out of Milford. That proves the point. The earth heals itself because I know for a fact the tax tests were used DDT and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> I, I, I won't introduce my daughter who's in the audience here, but I used to use DDT in our Ham New Hampshire house, yeah. and my kids are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it does heal itself. So we've gone through the preliminary studies. Uh, we've found, we're pleasantly surprised with the 10-foot holes so far, and I'm not sure if I ask it, but we haven't hit any ledge, which is a big problem in this town. Really big problem, but from what we saw, the soil sample, 10 feet down, it was too wet to perk when we did it. We'll do it this summer, if approved. But uh, the engineer felt that because of the sand-soil mixture uh, on site when I was with him, that it's, it's good for, it's porous enough for the septic systems, it's, and there should be plenty of well locations up there, from their viewpoint. And that's one of our butters. I've got to listen to him. <laughs> we've, we've lived there since 
1974, yep. and I've only had to have my septic pump maybe three times. Wow. And it, it is leached fine, and my well is unusual. I got an artesian well, it's only 100 feet deep. It supplies two houses. Hmm. Never ever run dry. Now, I hope they don't tap it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll work on it. <laughs> it may be supplying three houses. Yeah. <laughs> You're going on vacation, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I think we went back to our design firm for the architecture of this building. Here's the front entrance and behind the area here is the back portion of the building. There's a chart over there that shows the continuum, how the front continues to the back, that one on the left. So we don't have a side view of this. We saved a few dollars in our budget. But this is the uh, back portion, and as you can see, working with the CPA group, right? And again, people talk about they need fields, they need these things. We needed recreation, and I, we didn't have it in our budget. We work with that group because part of the money we've all paid to date is in their funds. So they're, they're putting on the warrant as well, an article, to fund two pickleball courts, a basketball court, which Dan suggested because he's overrun at his place at the, at the beach. And we're putting in the bocce courts and shuffleboard courts for the center. Did you just say Dan Beyer with the Parks Department? Yeah, Dan was the promoter of that, yes. So with that said, we have floor plans scattered around here. And we can, I think in your package you also have them. Where it has an upper level and a lower level. Our first price from the architect uh, was somewhere around seventeen four to seventeen six million dollars. So we said that doesn't fly. That's way crazy. Go back and get the pencil out. So you want to tell them too what that was based on? So that oh okay that Please. number was based on when they did an analysis back in two thousand eighteen to what the senior center needed at that time. That was a square footage and design that they came up with. Um, so that 17 million was based on the 2018 needs, and that building in 2018 was approximately eight million, nine million. Nine million. So that's the increase of costs um, between COVID and inflation between 2018 to now. It was the same exact building, same exact specs, same exact square footage, and it went from nine million to a little over 17. Yeah. What's the total square footage of the whole place? So 11,600, I believe. But what was the question? Did you say 11,000 for the building? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. It looks bigger than that, but okay. Yeah, I think, the, <laughs> I don't know if, if I have it in my chart here. I think in my. Um, so that's what you told me the other day, then. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 If I look here at the bottom line, 11,676 square feet. Pro square feet. Someone asked a question. Could you repeat it? Okay, I'm sorry. Good point. Someone asked a question regarding uh, the square footage of the building, and it's 11,600, uh, 700 square feet, roughly. But anyway, going through the design element, when that number came to us at 17 million, that, that wasn't appropriate. So we said, go back and see what you can do. If you look at the floor plan <coughs> over there, Dave's going to be my van at this time. <laughs> if you look at the floor plan, this part of the building was originally going to be functional area. But because of the way the grade of the property and the slope, we removed some of the heavier retention walls and were able to free up close to a million dollars by making this, if you will, this is the ground floor. There's no basement underneath it. And we have these two sections, only a basement, the lower level under the one section. The uh, other savings we took, took account into was the siding. I think we saved, Dave, a couple, 150,000, 175,000? Might have been. Going from clapboard to vinyl. Going from clapboard to vinyl. Industry, good vinyl. But uh, it's, uh, we saved some money there. 
the solar panels, which we will try to get, but we defer those until we find a grant. The building's being built to be solar compatible, so all we need to do is plug it in. So, but uh, we didn't want to keep jacking it up until we found the money. Uh, and if we find grants, we'll ex explore all those. The architect's going to come back and give us a position on <clears throat> the green status or what type of building it is and more details. So we should have that for you folks, too. Yes? I have a question. You talk about solar panels and energy. What are they going to use for heating? I think I know what the answer is, but what are they going to use for heating? We're propane right now. We're propane or gas. Well, I, we're going to use gas for generators, but I think we're going to use electric through uh, uh, heat pumps. Yeah, that's. I guess it all depends on the solar and the grants. Yeah. So that's a that's a work in progress. Yeah. Whichever is most efficient. Yeah. They'll, do, they'll do an analysis during the the final design. Final and engineering, design. and they'll have um, and the, these guys work with uh, energy efficient people to, and they'll they'll cost it out to see what's the most efficient to do. And the reason I ask is because I know the gas line comes right up to the yep. end of my driveway. Yep. And they will not put a tap in there so I can run propane. Yeah. <laughs> but I was wondering if we're gonna use that gas line to Well there's two the options I think there's one on gas line on sixteen as well. Yeah it comes up sixteen and then yeah. it comes along and all that. That's we, part of the school driveway. They, we talked about that with the uh, engineering firm, and that's, you know, we look at that, that as a source. Minimally a source for the backup generation system. Mm -hmm. Menden's a green community, so they're going to make sure they stay within our strict yes. standards for energy efficiency and for, you know, insulation factors and, and then the heating factors for the efficiency. I mean, they have to be over, over 96 or 97 percent for a propane or gas. Um, but I think what they're going to do is a cost analysis to determine um, if there's grants available for solar, that will affect it. Um, you know, obviously it'll be more affordable, but if it has to be all out of pocket, then they'll do an analysis based on a 25 to a 50 year run and see, you know, is it going to pay for itself? Is it going to yeah. truly be efficient? Yeah. Yep. What about air conditioning? Yeah. Is that included? Yeah, it's okay. included. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, you no, need. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's included. Yep. Yeah. One of the uh, three is talking about affordable uh, tags. I'm sorry? Everybody is talking about photovoltaics, solar panels on the roof, and so on and so forth. Is there any any consideration been given to solar thermal? Solar thermal. And what is that? Basically, it's solar. Hot water. Uh, it, it's solar hot water. water. Hot water. Oh, yeah, hydro. Yeah, coil. Geo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when we get into detail, detailed design, we'll look at it. The builder did talk. Not the builder. The designer has a geothermal kind of contraption they put in one of the buildings he has now, but based on how they collect the cool from the air and underground, because they drill down, uh, one of the facilities, and it, we need to find out what will work here, is actually going to have to replace that because the filtration system is getting overburdened and the cost of changing filters all the time is not working. So there's a lot of considerations. And when we get down to that level of design, we have hard numbers, and we're going to stick to those hard numbers. And we're not going to move from those hard numbers unless we get grants to move us in those directions. But uh, we will look at all those elements. Yes? Yeah, I, I, I just would like to say I, I hope that the possibility of doing this, of doing both the heating and the cooling system with geothermal will be considered by we the are. engineering people. Yeah, because, we will. Because that has the potential to be much cheaper to operate. Operationally, absolutely. Operationally is much better. Yeah. The, the people we deal with, so like this architect, he's built schools that mm -hmm. use geothermal or solar or right. propane, so they have all the options. The okay. firms that we're using um, have done multiple schools, multiple police stations. Um, so when we went through the police station study, we ended up doing the same thing here. They get a cost analysis where they get you pretty close. Mm -hmm. And then once you're approved, that's when you spend the money in the design mm -hmm. and those analysis because you don't want to spend that money now. Right. Um, part of that with the police station, 500000 was just design OPM. And, and the finals. So, I mean, to put that into it now without a vote for the whole building, it, it'd be a waste, be a waste of, money. of money. So we put a good amount into it. I think there's 50, 25,000 to it? 35,000. 35,000 into it now to get the cost analysis um, and then to use their experience on previous buildings to get a good estimate of this. They have professional estimators that will just put this together for a living and then they look at it and they have the, um, they also put in, what's the cost? I'm slipping my mind right now. The uh, 
Contingency. So contingency. now they have the contingency too. Um, and we would have went under with the police station, but we hit a ledge. So our contingency got blown up with that. Um, and, and we had that big tank that had to go in. So, um, But hopefully there's a contingency here that will cover yeah, everything. This, and then that can be something to look at the other options for heating and AC as we get yeah. closer to the end of the project. But at least the people you're dealing with are familiar with Absolutely. all yeah. these options. Yeah, Absolutely. we're, we're going to use the professionals you know, the in their field. And then we're going to use the people we need on the committee. Um, yeah. I think we build the committee up with residents, builders, people who are in the field, so they can take their analysis, look at it, and again, they're the professionals. It's like, you know, I can tell you anything about police services, but I don't know anything about that. So we've got to rely on them, yeah. and then we throw it, and that's, that's the plan with the process. One of the things dealing with this committee has been really good, because we really default back to people with expertise. We're not just making our own calls. Mm -hmm. what, we, let, we default back to people with expertise. Mm -hmm. We don't make the calls, and uh, our architect, I think, is good. Excellent, actually, uh, and they have experience in this. The uh, engineering firm, I was impressed with the way they did due diligence in the preliminary survey of the land, digging the holes. Mm -hmm. Our highway department pitched in and helped out, so it was a good, good community effort to get this thing moving. But we got to get it moving because you can't, we can't do major fundraising, we can't do major grant chasing in some of these areas unless you have a project. So we need the townspeople to say we have a project and vote for this effort. Uh, and then one of the things besides the OPM, the first thing the committee will be doing is also looking strongly at grant capabilities. As an overall town, we don't have, we have pockets of it. I shouldn't say we don't have. We have pockets of good grant work, mm -hmm. but we don't have grant work that can be really focused as much as I'd like to see it personally. So I think we're going to invest a little bit of that OPM slash operational money in that area to find money that I think is going to save us in a long haul. Uh, yeah, I think we're, yes. So um, you, you talk about you have a budget set for these extra costs. Mm -hmm. What is that high number? No, well, the high, we have $1.2 million uh, contingency. contingency. You, you, the 13.2 is the number. Is the number. That's, no, that's the number. Scenario, that's the number. That's the number we stick to. We went through a professional firm who does these estimates along the way, PMC, and we have, uh, have $1.2 million worth of contingency in there. My goal would be to take that $1.2 million, unless we hit ledge, and try not to use that all for just building and maybe use it for other things. You run this like a business. So the 13.2 is a consideration of what potentially could be your highest cost right. for your heating and air conditioning and everything else. It, it's, it's the highest cost for everything because if, if it's approved in May, and we learned this the hard way with the police station, we have to hire an OPM and a design firm. Mm -hmm. You're looking at six to eight months there. There's time in there that costs of materials are going to go up. By the time we break ground, um, we're looking at 10 months from the day it's approved if it's approved. And we learned at the police station, we had approved originally for 5.5 million. We had some design problems. We lost 12 months. And during that time, a contingency wasn't built in. And just in that time of one year, the price went up a million dollars. And unfortunately, we had to go back to the town. We don't want to make the same mistake again with this. The other we're, thing, we're getting more efficient when we look at buildings. And we, in the past 20 years, we've built four buildings in this, in this town. You know, the school, the library, the fire station, the police station. And each time I'm hoping that we learn something from it and we start getting committee members from the committees. And hopefully every time we have a project on, we can learn a little bit from it. So this is the bottom line with escalators built in. If it doesn't go up, if inflation doesn't keep rising the way it's been rising and we can stay efficient, there could be cost savings where we could look at different heating options or there could be a return right off of the bond. You know, if there's enough there and it's outfitted right. and you're below the contingency, then the price can go off the bond. So the, the goal would be to just be efficient and... I believe the escalation factor for inflation, because by the time we go through the study, we're into it another year. Yep. So we're already anticipating that 13.2, another uh, 5, 5 to 8%, I forgot exactly, but it's 5% minimum. It. Already built in for when we break ground, the cost will be higher. What's the estimate on, say everything goes according to plan, everything gets approved, what is your estimate on when it would be completed? I would guess, Dave, but you can correct me. I'll let you do this. But I think it's probably early 26. Yeah, spring of 26. 
26. 26. I think that lady has a question. Yes. Could you speak to accessibility in general? Well, the f it's going to be completely ADA accessible. That's it. Elevators, wider staircases, it'll be fully compliant. ADA accessibility is key. What's the capacity on the elevator? Uh, I think, I don't recall offhand, but I think it's going to be, it's not going to be a little box. It's going to need state standards for the state ADA. Standard. ADA the capacity standard. of the buildings. It's all rated by capacities of buildings, and it's going to be everything in here is just like the police station. It's done to state standards. We have a lift in the police station that we'll probably never ever use, but we had to put in there according to state standards. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, um, accessibility besides physical, um, any notion of rail signage? I mean, when you say fully accessible, what do you mean? ADA is a state compliancy for all, all access, whatever it is, whether it's Braille, whether it's um, the size compared to the building of what you need for elevators, for widths of doors, everything. We have to meet state mandates that are very strict. So it's going to be the, besides a police station, the only one that's built ADA, ADA accessible, Compatible. period. Yeah. We don't have any other buildings There's that no other built building. ADA accessible up to yeah. code. It will be the only one besides the police station. Yeah, and in addition to this, the... Going back to the CPA organization uh, and the funds from the money we paid, the conservation, we're looking to, they're going to do, there's an article there for like a small amount of money to do a design study because I'd like to see ADA compatible trails somewhere in this town, anywhere in this town. <laughs> but we need them because it's not only senior citizens, there's, there are younger people yeah. in this town who have disabilities that we can't, well, we go to different towns. Our walking group chair is sitting here somewhere. Diane. Diane. Tell us where you take everybody to walk, we Diane. We basically walk over in Milford along the paved trail from across from Sacred Heart Church out to Louisa Lake. On Wednesdays, we walked in Hopedale and we walked from along the pond all the way down to the bridge and then back again. And then on Fridays, we go over to Uxbridge to the Riverbend Farm mm -hmm. and walk along the canal there. Did you notice that nowhere in our walking program is there a walking program in Mended? Yeah. We got a lot of trails, which are good for hikers, but we need to, we need, and Anne's been really open about that with his money. She's committed to support ADA handicap accessibility to these trails with the adequate parking so you can get in and out of your cars and vehicles. So I think those things will happen. Ann Mazar, yes, thank you. Ann Mazar. Yes. We're both competing projects. Are we doing anything going on down at the rescue farm? Is going to be putting trails there too? Well, there's tra she has a whole budget to do different trails and things. I understand. Is there resource issues as far as who's going to be building what and when it's going to happen? No. The, C the CPA um, is in charge of most of that, and I think that's where there's a lot of confusion on the internet too that we need fields, we need trails. I think we do. But you got to go forward like this committee did six years ago. You got to bring it to the select board. You got to bring it to the CPA because there are funds available. Last night at the uh, FinCom meeting for the budget hearing, um, there's about $2 million worth of right now articles that if they pass, it will go over to the CPA. There's still another $2 million in their fund. And that's for trails, recreation, fields, affordable housing. Um, and that's, they're already doing $2 million worth of work this year. You pay 3% in your taxes that go to this fund. And that's all it can be used for, recreation, yeah. affordable housing. So we just need to get the right people together to push these the projects because the CPA can't do it on their own. Yeah. They're, they're overwhelmed with everything they're doing. So there's nothing, it's, it's not competing money-wise. I guess the competing would be the time and effort of people to put in. I would ask for more volunteers to step forward to you know, develop trails, to, to get committees together to, for fields because there is money and funding available. That's what that extra 3% that you're paying your taxes has to go to. Can't go to anything else. Can't go to operations, can't go to capital. Has to go to those, those resources because yep. we're a green community. But it is competing money because if some of that money is being done against the rescue farm. No. I'd, well, it'd be, it would be competing if we were diminishing it, but it's all there. It's still... It's not going to cost $2 million to do all of this stuff. It's, and the money keeps replenishing every time you pay your taxes. 3% keeps going into it. Yeah, there's no so it's a, it's a fund that keeps increasing funds. And unless you do something with it, I mean, we've bought, 
I mean, there's still two million, and if you think what we've done in the past few years, the um, the Quisset Farm Project, where they invested over a million dollars of, of the CPA funds, there's North Ave that they did last year that they bought the rights on it to do those trails. That was over half a million dollars. So you think of the type of money that is going out, that money is still in there. It's a revolving fund that just keeps... They're putting the lighting... And they need to find more projects, you know. They're putting lighting in the fields, yeah. which I think should be going in by the summer or fall. Yeah. There's still one-third of the police station was funded with CPA funds, and that still goes into the police station. There's still CPA, CPA funds available. So yeah. there's Remember? a lot of projects that they're involved with, and there's still $2 million left over. Yeah. So, But yeah. it, it just we need volunteers. It's tough yeah. to get people to volunteer. Really yeah, is. I think if we can't champion all the rec recreations, yeah. we went out and said we need recreation facility for, to replace what we have here and do better. And ADA handicap trails were very important for us, so that was one of our buzzes. But Dan came to us and said, we desperately need a basketball court for our youth and other people in town. I said, well, we're digging ground here. If that works, and if you can fund it through CPA, their funds will support that connection in the back of the building, but it's not competing, because yeah. as you said, Chief, they have funds. And Ann actually seemed pretty excited about it to almost join them. The only problem she has at this point is that they, when she talked about it last night, there's a piece of land between it that the town doesn't own, so mm -hmm. someone owns. So eventually they like to try to get access to that and join them all together. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's always the goal. But I mean, there's a lot of projects that we've done over the past 20 years with CPA, and I think now it's time to invest in the fields, affordable housing, because yeah. I don't know how much more land there is to yeah. available to keep purchasing in town anymore. I don't think I think we're diminishing that. They're not making more land, and we own a lot of it. So yeah. I think now is the time to invest on the land and do the things that they were supposed yeah. to do. Just like we bought this land over 20 years ago for municipal projects, and we haven't built anything on it yet. Mm -hmm. So I was saying that was an example of that trail. But yep. other in other projects that this town is going to be doing, that's going to be requiring a lot of these extra funds that we're trying to... Well, interesting enough, and uh, you, Chief, you support me on this, the finance committee, right, the finance group, Jody, the director, and our accounting firms, and the way we're structuring bonds. And you'll see in this packet, I think the number for a assessed value of 500000 is 148 or $149 a year. Uh, we put that number there, not absorbing all the money. Things falling off the budget. There's money left for people to start projecting monies for future projects. And there's also a new thing that's happening, we're part of, is the, uh, we're taking a capital investments and looking at a five to seven year plan, which we haven't done in a long time. I can't remember when we've done that. So we're getting out of the, the project of crisis now. Uh, the select board committee and the finance committee, or Jody, the finance person, and the TA, acting TA, and a few other people were putting the project. We now know what visibility of five years' worth of expenses, major projects, not operational stuff. And there's, there's school things coming up. Uh, that one's there. It's a bona fide project, and we're looking at that. But it can fit into this budget and process as we go. I'll have better data at the town meeting to show how things drop off and things. But we can level fund and manage our debt so we don't keep crazy up and down. We are asking for money, but it's a small amount compared to what we would have done in the past in overrides or whatever they were. So one last question. Sure. Um, this is a senior center slash community center. What focus is it percent of your office? I think if you look at the primary, we, I think you're going to see that this area up here during the day, top floor, it's predominantly going to be senior center activity, 9 to 4, 9 to 5. Available in the evenings, the downstairs area below is community center activities. And food pantry. And food pantry. Oh, yeah. Can't, we have a lot of other functions we do here. We have food pantry. We have, uh, we have a lot of functions we do here. And there's food pantries down there, multi-purpose rooms, <coughs> food classroom. There's a game room area. And today, the Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts come here at night and use this building periodically. I used to do the den meetings in my basement. Up there, if you can envision, think of the vision, you're across from club school. You could theoretically have your den meeting, your Cub Scout meeting after school. They could come across, the den leaders could meet them, they could have functions during the day. 
and the building would be operational for them. I mean, this adds a whole new development, not just to the senior center, but to the community. If you want to put a function on for your family on a weekend, I, you showed me that one, Nick. What was that? It was on Facebook? I don't remember. Somebody was looking for somewhere to have a, or their kid's birthday party. Not in their home, because it's winter. They have a December baby like I do. And for, for a maintenance fee, nominal fee, just to make sure it's clean, families could use this facility. It has recreation that will not be done at between 9 to 5. Recreation for the pickleball and basketball could be done in the evening. You know, we have lights. There'll be time. It'll be secure. So when people go to vote on this, mm -hmm. are you going to think this is a senior center project or a community center project or both? I think it's both. It's not one or the other. It's both. Uh, you know, I, I, my opinion on this has changed, but I thought <laughs> if you guys had marketed it community center slash senior center, I think more people in the community, you know, would be a little more excited because then, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just in terms of marketing. I thought this was the project or something. That's yeah. when the well, had it out. Early on when we started this out, what was our, what was our problem, right? Yeah. Our problem was this building, when we have a veterans program, we turn veterans away. This building, when we have an event or a luncheon where we serve people, they are waitlisted because they can't come into the building. If you want to serve people, you can't come in the building. So we had a problem that said Senior Center Expansion. That was the project name when it came out of the door. And then as we did our analysis and we thought about what are the possibilities, vision that, what we could do with this. And then we looked to the people who are using, 10 to 20 organizations use this building in the evenings but they could use it during the day. The Lions Club would love to have a home. Or the brothers would like to have a home. It's all possible if you think about that vision. So it morphed is what I'm saying to you. It was a, we have a problem with this building, we can't serve our, our seniors. But then we, as we explored it, we said, okay, what else can we do? For the same money. And with, well, the, with the needs in Menden, and just getting our essential buildings first, the senior center being one of them, yeah. um, a community center would always be kind of down the line. That's something that most towns do when everything else they have, when they have a police station, a fire station, everything built and they're good, then they build a community center. Menden, we're a smaller town, a different tax base, and we gotta be creative. We gotta think outside the box and be efficient with our dollar. Yeah. You know, uh, We don't have the tax base, the business tax base that other towns have that they can use the extra money from a you know, uh, an Amazon or, or the businesses that come in that bring in positive income that don't affect the schools. You know, our, our, our income that comes in has usually a du direct correlation to the schools. So it, it doesn't go towards a general fund. It has to be split up among everybody, you know. So we're just trying to be more efficient. And that's why we, we got different department heads and builders and just to do the best. We all pay taxes in town and we want to get the bang for our buck out of this. We want to make sure we do something efficient for the town, you know, and something that's going to be here a long time. And something the town can be proud of and happy to, to use. And, and I think I brought up the point when we're doing it, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, if you have a family, if there's a senior activity going on upstairs and the kids want to be on the basketball court or, um, you know, the, it, it's a generational, multi-generational. Multi generation. it, it, it's, you know, three or four generations can be in that building and use it at the same exact time. So it's not, you know, just dropping mom off at the senior center for her, her lunch. Hey, I'm going to go out and play pickleball with my friends at the same time. You know, and you know, use it. Is going to be able to handle a community center. Yeah. Not the, just a there's over yeah, 100 the park, some spots. The parking is designed for that. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Absolutely. That's my question. Is parking yeah. going to be like municipal town parking? Like, or is that going to be for just this center? Oh, it's going to be just for that. I don't know um, okay. where else you would. I don't know. Like, yeah. when I'm at Clough a million times and I'm parked in the field, <laughs> can we, <clears throat> will we be able to park in those spots? I, yeah. I, I, I think you can. Yeah. But we've also floated. Oh, I see the little overflow. Yeah, yeah. For that. another project, the entrance where everybody that goes to Clough, like me and yeah. you, yeah, just parks on the grass. That area could probably be set up nicer too. But it's going to be a town project. We can't absorb all the projects. Of this the town. overflow that Phil's talking about isn't going to be built right now. Yeah. yeah, that's something maybe we can approach a school about, and that can be an overflow. Yeah. to think that you're the school is this a big distance from here to here? I don't think you're going to have people parking over here 
yeah. and walk all the way down. That's a big distance. We're going to walk. So I don't think the yeah. school is going to be a conflict with it. Um, I mean, it, it's it's a hike. Yeah, it is. It's a hike. This parking lot might be more convenient, but if you think where the cars park now, when they're overflowed, this is the field right here, the park right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So 100 spots, excluding that. Uh, yes. Overflow? The overflow idea is designed again. If we do something here, and then this, this road here is conceptual. It'll probably be dirt right now. We cut that out as a savings too. This is for future municipal use, but we figured whatever future municipal use is being done, let's address it at that time. Maybe we can use CPA funds, maybe whatever buildings we put back there, we can absorb it then. It doesn't make sense just to have a road to nowhere that ends. Yeah, I think so, that when we were reducing that, the cost. That was like a million right there. That was a million dollars reduced. Because they were going to build a road, a street. Yeah. So we'll wait a minute. Not yet. Yes? Do you have an estimated uh, operations cost over what? The operational cost here is around 16, uh, up to, excuse me, it's up higher. It's 17,000 or change on an annual basis. We're anticipating it'll probably be thirty to $40,000, double, uh, double again, half when we move into it. We'll have more efficiency there in what we do inside the building. We did a cost-based analysis based on the, the old police station, the new police station, yeah. how much we had to absorb with that. Um, but I mean, we, we jumped up a lot, a lot more in cost. This building is actually more efficient than our old police station was. So I mean, it, it was, we did the best we could to do a cost analysis, yeah. and that's probably the higher end. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there any thought about what will become of this building if we vote this and build it, and you know, there. this won't, this will still be here. Yes, I think uh, we look at a long range, we probably could save a million dollars worth of future cost of needs. Uh, as soon as on the article, you're going to see something requesting, I think, 20000 or some amount of money to do a study for this mm -hmm. building, because this building works. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. There are some people who are interested in, highly interested in it because of the way of a garage basement downstairs. Uh, the highway department and the parks and rec are really interested in this building. They could be able to use this for summer training for some of their people. They could use this for offices that they don't have. They could use it for a repair shop down below. That's an immediate candidate, but we're going to invest some money to figure it out. To figure it out. Yeah. And that is also an article on the town meeting. So if you vote for this, I would vote for that. It will pass it if you don't. But I would vote for that as well, because what we're going to do, uh, that'll get this building operational. So when we move out, somebody will be able to move in or configure it so they can move in. And their costs for operational costs. Yeah, they'll have to increase their operational costs to take the building. $17,000 a year right. today. Yeah. Okay, so we're not including another 40. It's, you're saying 17 going to 40, but it's not going to be 57,000 operational costs for this town, will it? Well, it would be. If you operated this building, you have $17,000 that you'd have to run. But if you wanted to build another parks and recreation building close to the field, guess what? You have $15,000 worth of operational cost. So you're going to pay and me there, you're going to pay... But parks doesn't have a home right now, so no. you're probably paying more in parks budget because they don't have a home. True. You know, they have temporary trailers, they, they're moving stuff around. Yeah. Equipment breaks down more because there's nowhere to put it. Um, yeah. Right now they just, they've been looking for a home. He was trying to get, I think it was $100,000 two years ago to put a trailer over there and put electricity in it and try to make that the park's home. So, yeah, and that's where I go back to, we get to uh, address our needs first before, and yeah. that's how the community center came into it because we can't afford to do two separate buildings. Yeah. You mentioned the, the building that was a kind of abandoned over there next to the fire station. What was the deal with that? There was some talk years ago about making that the, the new senior center. So. so that was, we can go way back on that. I guess that's, I'm the <laughs> one probably left. You can, you can talk um, to history. <laughs> so we're talking 2010, maybe, 2009. Um, the police station had gone forward three times, failed three times. Um, and finally, a group got together called the Friends of the Menden Police Station, and they championed that on their own. Um, Mr. Meehan actually framed that building and paid for it. They all they started doing it on town land. And then we get to a point at that point back then where they were going to start moving forward with it more, but they needed money for it. And then they realized it was all done illegally. Like, you can't just build a building on town property. Um, so the project kind of stalled. The costs that we're going to have to do were going to be exorbitant. So it was, it was, again, the money wasn't there. We hit the recession at the time. 
2010, and the building just stayed empty. Um, and then, you know, we went through changing staff here, changing leadership, things moved on, and then 2016 came, I became chief, and one of the first things I did is, um, again, we started a study back then to say, hey, we need a police station. What are we gonna do? And we looked at that and did analysis there, and the same thing, it was gonna be more money to finish that than it was to do the project that we have, the beautiful police station we have now. So that building is just, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's gonna be used from this use for something. I mean, it was for sale at one point, but it's just a bad spot too with the fire engines and everything going on there. So that's, I guess, something for the select board eventually to figure out what are you gonna do with that building. But they, they bought the property behind it, so there's, yep. there's other municipal use there, but yep. this is a better spot. If the highway needed to expand operationally, if they need to put their admin wing here, they could do it. Um, parks department, they could have a home. I don't think this building will be into that building if that's what you're getting at, that you're afraid this will be empty like that building. Yeah. I think it's a completely different situation. Different, yeah. 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 Well, if you ever looked inside that building, you have a dirt floor and walls. Exactly. And you know, I, I commend the friends of the men at police station who did it. They really wanted to do something for the town. They cared about their community. Yeah. It's just they got into a bind with what happened, and it's a shame that it ended up that way. Yeah. But they put a lot of effort and work into it, and, and they're help, mostly responsible for the new police station, too. If they didn't start that, we probably wouldn't have been able to get the new station. That's a good point. So. Excellent point. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, two. One, mm -hmm. one question is, once this physical plant is built out, mm -hmm. is things like AV systems, Bluetooth, we have a, there's whatever, a, is that in the budget? Or there's an additional, there's an additional 600 and change thousand dollars to outfit the building okay. for the uh, accessories, the needs, the locks, the so, things. So there's another 600 and some thousand dollars. And as we go forward, and if we have a project, Again, we'll look for fundraising to offset for cost of furniture and some other things. But we do have money planned. We do have some. Stuff. And we're not coming back you to know, look for. You'd have a community room, but no, but no projector, no whatever it is. I don't think that'll be the issue. Yeah. I don't think that'll be the okay. issue. Okay. The other question yeah. this is clearly fluffy, um, but did the architect, did the architects tip their hat to the Taft Orchard fact of an orchard there at all? Um, no. No, I he looked at all architects from uh, in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. He's mainly out of New Hampshire. Yeah. And he would work with uh, Amy before in the past. But he, we were looking at this site here to see what we could do for the first three months, and then we hit the wall. Yeah. Then we hit a cost wall. No, just, just curious. Yeah. I, no. I mean, as I said, fluffy. No. Um, I mean, nobody had a bias. All we knew is that that was town municipal property and available. And if it passed, not a bad location. But the history of it was not part of the architects. No. no. Maybe you could include that at some point in time, have a community project where you could have like a small grove with a park like setting and or something. You have actually, well, actually, we talked about. Right. Um, Peg? I'm Peg Noguera uh, from the Council on Aging and also with the committee. Yeah. Um, we've been speaking, uh, we've been speaking to uh, the people at the library. I live on the Bellingham Menden line, and my husband and I frequently go down to the Bellingham Park to walk because yeah. it's very, very pleasant there. Mm -hmm. And I noticed about six months ago that the library started putting up these big plexiglass uh, storyboards so that if you have your children, you can walk around and you can read them the story, and there's benches, and it's, it's really a very nice place. So we spoke to the library saying that would be a great collaborative event mm -hmm. if we could put that together and if we could get the trails so that they actually went behind the library, you know, have it, have it connecting. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we really want this to be a real community place. Yeah. That's our goal. And, and to fit the character, man, if, if you notice the back of it, how they designed it kind of like a barn. You know, I think that's yeah, I mean, something that would fit is. in men, and it's not, you know, a metal building, right. it's not, right. and clearly, you know, it doesn't look like an industrial it's building. It's a farm community okay. building. Yeah. I was just, um, yeah. old yeah. enough to have lived in the Coyote. Yeah. How much the cost per square foot was on the station when I was completed? Uh, police station was under $300 a square foot. 300 Yeah. You couldn't do anything under 600 now. This, this works out to 1100 um, Somewhere around a thousand. Thousand now, yeah. Somewhere yeah. around a thousand. Yeah. So I actually have to look at it. Maybe it was maybe it was five hundred. Whatever we figured out, I don't have the numbers exactly. I want to say I thought it was three that we were building or four, but 
the cost analysis now, it would actually, the police station now would be $14 million, same police station. They did a cost analysis to say, hey, what, we build this police station now after COVID with inflation, it's a $14 million building. And that's kind of why, you know, we put so much time into this and then we're trying to fill this into the debt schedule because it's not going to do, it's not going to go down. I think we, we've learned that through history. The police station, we tried four times. The first one was 1.5 million. The second one was 2 million. The next one was 4 million. And then finally we settled at 6.5 million. And the $2 million one was really a kick in the butt because it was supposed to go in the same exact spot. And it was an $8 million grant. And the town had to pay $2 million for a police and fire station. That's all we had to pay for the grant. And we lost it by, I think, six or seven votes. And that station went to Hudson and they built it. And that's a $30 million building now with inflation. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of. We can't, it, it's, with municipal buildings, you've got to find the right time in that debt schedule and try to plug it in, because if you don't, it's not going to get cheaper and the need's not going to go away. It's going to, it's going to become a more important need as the years go by. Yes? Uh, my understanding is that part of the buildings uh, would be used for emergency use, and I'd love to understand exactly where on the building site would those with the capacity for 100 people to, to be there for an emergency. The current capacity, I'll give me a floor plan here. I'll be with you in a second. I think I have one here. If you have cots, the bottom has shower capabilities, which by the way I think is required. At least we need one for the senior center, uh, for elderly. But if you take a look at this area here, this multi-purpose room and it would be converted to cot area. You can also do it here. And you have showers that are down stairs, I believe. Showers, restrooms, and showers down here. And we have cot storage and cot facilities. We're looking, uh, and Mark is going to be looking to get grants. As, uh, but again, he can't get a grant unless we have a project. Mark Rukino, he's a town theme person. So if we have a grant, I mean, if we have a project, we can get more things, like the cots we're going to need, because we don't have 125 cots. We have about 30, we have about 30 now. I'm sorry, what? We have about 30 now, because the capacity for this room is 50, and the capacity for the second floor is 15. So out of the 1775 seniors we have in town, we can accommodate 65. So this is another unmet need that we have right now. Yes, that's important for the yeah, town. Yeah, that's true. It's a good an point. Emergency. Right. Where do you store that many cots? Downstairs. I'll give you the tour later. Peg <laughs> <laughs> will give her a nickel tour. She'll, she'll show you the food pantry in the basement, if you haven't seen it. She'll show you the storage area in the basement. And you've got to wiggle your way up the stairs to get to the second floor. Where would you put all those cots in a building in this one? In storage areas. We, we've, we've designed storage areas into it. I just looked it up for you in the old records. It was $606, at the, $606 per square foot at the time. At the time. In 2017. Okay. We went forward. Oh, yes. It has to be sprinkled. Any building over um, yep. 7,200 square feet. The police station is sprinkled, too. Yeah. You know, that's where we ran into our contingency problem. We had to put that huge underground we'll aqua floor to support it. Yeah. yeah, it's already in the budget. Same thing. Sprinkler and uh, I don't know how many gallons, but the multiple containers yeah. underneath the building yeah. to support the sprinkler system. The good thing about that is we have a whole area that you can put it in. The police station had to go in that left back corner at Town Hall. You couldn't do anything. And that's the only place they didn't do any test holes. Everywhere else they did test holes. <laughs> so when we hit it, we hit it, and it was horrible. <laughs> Hopefully... Uh, Dave, this project will be easier than your last one. You have around. a bigger footprint to work with. We, okay. we were on a tight this Ritz, is true. Ritz cracker. Now that you have the experience, you can, you know, anticipate some of these situations. Yeah. If, if this goes through, I plan on, uh, I volunteered my time to instantly with this committee. I plan on being on the next committee to build it. Yeah. And, and when the police station was being built, I was there every day with the OPM. I was there yeah. with the contractors. I was watching them over. I mean, we kicked people off the job site. You know, we had... We contracted smoking pot on the roofs, and I went there and kicked them <laughs> off. And so you never know what you're going to get with contractors. Yeah, building a police station, yeah. building a police station, yeah. Yeah. station yeah. and the smoking pot building the <laughs> building the station. So, so I'll be there every day watching it too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we're fortunate with the committee. I mean, the chief's on it for us, right? And he has the experience. We have Mike Amendola. Yeah, he does building for a living. He, was, he's, he builds for a living, and he was also on your committee. Yep, Mr. Van Sluis is on it. He's Van Sluis is on it as well. We have uh, a strong team. We have the select board members, Alana and Elena. I'm sorry. And Mike Goddard. And Mike's driving the forecasting and capital expenditures, which is good to have a person like that on this committee. Yeah. Tom then we, Fickner from the Board of Health. Right? Tom Fickner from the Board of Health. Yeah. We have Lonnie Tinio, a past board member. Yeah. You know, he's yep. with building too, so. And then Peg, obviously. It has to be prevailing wage. Everything in town has to be prevailing wages. Mm -hmm. Stay in prevailing wages. We can't get away from it. I, you know, I think uh, it's an opportunity for the town, not just seniors. We grew in our thinking in the past year and a half. Solve this problem, but then we saw a vision. And the vision doesn't cost a lot more, and you get a hell of a lot more benefit out of it. But time is of, of the essence, too. Yes. I have a question. Shoot. You say seniors. What's the age group for seniors? I'm just curious. I'm not one yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Piece that's 55. Yeah. Okay. 55. No, the, the, the state of but Massachusetts is 60. 60. Okay. So 60 and older is that 28 percent? Correct. But what I'd be curious to know, you might know this or not, what is the percentage of the population in town right now that's probably 40 to 60? I have no idea. I could get the number. Because I think that would help sell this. The future candidates, the future customers of it. The future seniors. The future seniors, that's right. That sounds like my range, no. Yeah, the town clerk would have to give us that. Yeah, I mean, we could probably get that information. I think the key thing is, is when I look at it, and as I get older and my wife get older, Amy's got some creative ideas of potentially putting adult daycare in here. And if you think about that activity, it's a self-funding. Yes. Self-funding. It's, self it's needed. It's been one of my one of my dreams since I've been here almost 17 years, and I want. We just don't have the, the space to do it. But so that the you, yourselves, if you're caring for an older parent and you need a day off so you can go, you know, swimming, go take a nap, go to the bank, go do whatever, um, go to the, out to lunch, that you have a place that you could bring bring someone. Right now, you can go to you can go to Bellingham to the, their senior yeah. center. They have an adult day it's program, somewhere. which is <laughs> really well funded. You know, and, uh, I've talked to their director, and it's just a, a matter of having space, and and then truthfully, we're having staff. But some of them, I'm hearing, they're funded by um, some of their um, some groups they work with, uh, different uh, assisted living facilities come in and, and um, assist. But uh, yeah, we'd love to have that here. We'd yeah. Love to have that here. yeah, I think uh, Amy and her staff have. I was amazed when I walked into this building. All the crutches that I bought, chairs that I bought for the kids to get them around when they broke a leg, you can loan those here. They're all here. They're all here. I'll show them to you. <laughs> if you needed to figure out how to get your insurance done, and I even asked a question the other day about Medicare B, they're here. If you need fuel assistance, they're here. If you need veterans programs, they're here. If you need food. If you need food, it's here. Anyone in town. If the kids need volunteer hours to make up for their, they can come here. Mm -hmm. And the kids come here. They chorus, the band. It's a wonderful experience. And if you haven't been here, I would urge you to come and watch the most important thing. You have vibrant life going on for senior citizens who otherwise would be sitting at home watching the TV. And you add that to the capability of making a community center where you can put yoga classes at night for the parents who work all day who aren't senior citizens. Right. We have that. Yeah. And we can fit, when these tables are moved out of the way, six, eight people can do yoga. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then we have to move all the furniture yeah. back for the then next day. Move the furniture. Oh. Oh. And it's heavy. Yeah, these are very and seriously, before you leave tonight, we have to break these tables down because we have exercise tomorrow morning. So no one can leave. We all can <laughs> move together. <laughs> it's an exercise group. Sure. 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 If, if you've never, I know, I hear it. <laughs> yeah. If you've 
never experienced having a meal here, like when we have the veterans breakfast, you see how the tables are? We're serving in between, in between. Mm -hmm. Someone might be, you know, they can't in, a, in a wheelchair or the cane yeah. falls. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have to work with. And I've been here helping mm -hmm. 16 years. Mm -hmm. yes, you know. And that kitchen is four, maybe five four of us four serving. Mm -hmm. Three of them in there. The kitchen. And I think with everything, with everything you hear here, that's where we developed into the community center. Yeah. Because they do more here than just be a senior center. And on top of it, with emergency management, I'm the director and Mark Bikino is the deputy director. Um, we don't have a true emergency shelter for this town. We're one of the only towns around here that don't. If we had something tear through us like Webster a few years ago where families were displaced and, out, and didn't have anywhere to go and they had to set up shelter for space for it, we do it here. They have no shower facilities. I don't know how many families we could fit in here, and the minute we do it, we shut down the senior center. Whether it be for a day, a week, a month, you would have to shut down the senior center um, until Red Cross came in and tried to figure something out. You could operate this as an emergency center and still run senior business upstairs. Um, we really should have a dedicated emergency shelter somewhere in town. Um, and then on top of it, we, we keep finding uses for this. We, uh, as the emergency management director, I have roundtables to discuss you know, major incidents in, time, in town. It's about planning. That's what emergency management is. It, it's not when something happens, we act. We, we do a lot of planning ahead of time. We do um, monthly meetings where we have roundtables with the highway department, the fire department, the schools. And one of the roundtables we've been doing recently is the school, if there's ever something that happens there, and we need to get everybody out of that school and send the kids somewhere because something is happening in there, you know, terrible. Um, where do they go? Right now the plan is to try to have them run and hide behind the, um, the barn over there. If, we could, if something happened there, you could pull a fire truck up for cover and we can get them all right to the senior center. So I mean, and you can also incorporate the school with the senior center, community center. You know, have programs with the, you know, the elementary school with the senior center. You know, um, you know most communities, most successful communities and, and, and um, societies, they take care of their youth and they watch after their elders. And I mean, blending something like that together would be perfect. You know, it would show, you know, the kids growing up, not just in education, but to respect your elders and to know that, you know, elders have an important, important place in our community. You know, that's where all the knowledge is. That's where historical knowledge is. You know, that's where the town has got built up. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of benefits to having it there and, and blending, you know, all this together. You know, not to get sappy on you, but, you know. Any other questions? If you have any questions between here and the elections, the two elections, by the way, it's got to pass the town by two-thirds majority, has to pass the ballot question on the 14th yep. uh, with a majority. So if you're interested in supporting it, we need your support twice. If you're not interested, I understand. I mean, there's a lot of priorities. Uh, this is an information center for information session for all of you. But a lot of the things out there, if you're thinking about if you need recreational fields, get a group of people. Start campaigning amongst yourself. Go to the select board. As Dave said earlier, there's money in the CPA funds that can be used today. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Granted, I found that out with this project. But if you have that need, that's good. And from uh, school, so, so the way we structure the debt with the finance department here, we're not taking all the money and absorbing it. We're taking a little bit of it. We're still passing a little bit on, but there's still some left. The fire department, they've got some new trucks and some new things coming in, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's, it's managing the debt properly. You know, there's two sides of government, and government gets confusing. It really does. It's hard to understand it sometimes. I've been doing it 28 years, and I get confused on it. But I'm only here. I have no idea. <laughs> there's, there's the debt side of it and then the operational side of it. Um, and the debt side of it, for a long time, the town hasn't managed. And I think we first started doing that with the police station. We had uh, Rich Schofield at the time, great financial mind, and uh, the TA. And we looked at it and said, when's a good time to build the police station? And we didn't say, let's just put it forward. Let's look at debt. When it falls off. Because really what you should do is try to maintain that debt. Every town's going to have to have some type of debt level. And most towns maintain it, you know, like a $2 million debt level, and they try to stay within that. And when something drops off, that's when you try to plug in the next project. And you try to maintain it so you don't affect the taxes. Taxes are always going to go up because of two and a half period. That, that's operational side. 
But if you can maintain your debt and not make it go up because of debt, then you can still have a community that you build buildings and maintain what you have. You need to maintain what you have and be good stewards of, of what the town the town has because we're just we pass through this and we should just take care of the town like everybody else has. Yep. Um, so we we've. We've strategically put this in at a time where debt's falling off, and it's a good time to put it in. And in a few years after us, debt will fall off again. That's time for another project. But the good thing with that, if there's no project in line right now that, that we don't we have, you saw it took 10 years to get this off the ground. If we need another building, there's a lot that goes into it. There's feasibility studies. There's committees that have to be formed. From the day you say, I need a new, I need a not, new highway department, a new highway, it's going to take you five years to get to the point where you even need to get where we are right now. And at that time, debt's falling off as you pay it off. And, and structuring that way is, is a good way to do it. We've done it for the past eight years, and hopefully the town continues to do that. Operational is different. That's where the overrides are that stay permanent. When you vote for an override, a two and a half override, that's a permanent operational expense. When you do a debt exclusion, that means someday that debt's gonna fall off. And that's what this is, it's a debt exclusion. So when the bond's paid off, it falls off, and you plug another project in. That makes sense. I'm probably confusing people. No, I that was crazy. That actually was very good. Dave's been trying to teach me about government debt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The start off in the life of go to the school, five, six years old. Next thing you know, you're in your late 80s, and you're looking for some place to go, or to go on bus trips, or to go on meals. And my wife and I, over the past couple of years, we've enjoyed going on bus trips with the senior center. We've, on, we've enjoyed going on bus trips with the senior center. And we come down here twice a week for exercise. And we've, I've come to the veterans' meals, and yet yeah, it is crowded. And a lot more veterans should come than, than this come. But just remember, if you're 50 years old, Pretty soon you're going to be 80 some years old. <laughs> you know, right. It doesn't take long. <laughs> it sure doesn't. So, uh, and there are a lot of seniors that we use. Yes. Do you have any extra signs? Yes, we do. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I would love to. If you want to promote this, we do. Sure. I would love to have you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you bring up a valid point. Everything you look at, and uh, when you in your older years. Community, society, activity, staying active, keeping your mind active, all those things are crucial to life and quality of life. And Amy and her crew, that's, what they're, that's their business, quality of life. I was never so much impressed when I walked in here with the small staff and the people and the, the feel you get just walking in the door. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous thing. And I think it really is a need, and I mean, not to beat COVID to death, but everybody talks about COVID, but COVID really changed our world. It changed policing. I mean, our, our policing is different now. We have different standards. And now I never thought 28 years ago we'd have cl clinicians. We have clinicians now. We share mute, uh, regional compact where if something happens, someone's in mental distress, depressed, um, that we have clinicians come out. Because COVID really has changed. We have a big world, but it actually is really small. Now with the internet and everything that goes on, people spend a lot of time alone. Depression is a, is a real thing that's, that's increased since COVID. Um, and one of our most uh, susceptible, susceptible age groups are the seniors. I mean, they spend a lot of time alone, and it's hit them more. And I think, you know, a building where they can feel more comfortable, have more to do, um, you know, feel that sense of community is important. And now if you build it with a community center and have other age other groups kids. there, and you have, you know, their grandkids there, um, you know, I'm in the middle of it. You know, I'll probably, I have a grandmother that can go and I have kids that can go. I think it's a, a great thing for the community in general to bring community feeling back together to kind of get, you know, make the world feel a little bit bigger after COVID made it seem so small. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Yeah, and uh, again, one more question, yeah. been working to get to this point. Yeah. And every, every time we would see you, you had something new to, to go on. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been great. This, been yeah. Thank you for that. This has been an evolution, not only by us, but by all of you, too, and the people in the town. This project's grown in its mission, not in its cost. 
because of the townspeople and what the needs are. And it's been a pleasure to work on it so far. We've got a lot more work to do, hopefully. Okay.